Hi folks and welcome to another video from a plain truth info. Uh, I want to get into the corporate ends of things in a little more detail and it's all been because of you guys are commenting and adding your uh, your participating in the comments and adding it here. So, but first I want to get to a quote from the higher ups who control everything almost, but a little inside a quote it says the few who understand the system will either be so interested in its profits or so dependent on its favors that there will be no opposition from that class. Well, on the other hand, the great body of people mentally incapable of comprehending the tremendous advantages will bear its burden without complaint and perhaps without suspecting that the system is imical, imical to their best interest. And that's from the Intercommunications of the Rothschilds in 1863. So, folks, we've been had for a very long time, but I want to get more into the nuts and the bolts, and you guys gave some great comments about the founding of Washington, D.C., and... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, how they're all a corporation or corpsuration and we're all fictitious characters in the eyes of the law and that everything's about corporations, everything. When you sign your name, you're part of contract law. So that's what we'll get into here, a little more nuts and bolts type of stuff. And please uh, be the author of your own authority. Take back your power by taking back your rights. My next presentation is going to be about some act activist stuff we've been able to do to successfully um, declare our authorship of our own authorities where the communities where we live. Anyway, so enjoy the documentary. Thanks for the comments. Keep them coming in. I really, really appreciate all of you uh, supporting the work here. And um, let's, let's keep the knowledge going, folks, and, and keep learning as we grow. Learning as we grow. So one thing I want to do here is shout out to all of those who are making comments and contributing to the uh, to the common uh, discourse and, and learning for all of us about some hidden secrets that are just being presented to us now, some very deep hidden secrets, um, and then getting into the legal aspects of everything and how the legal framework was set up uh, with Washington, D.C. being the uh, crowning achievement of the uh, ISIS between uh, uh, the new birth of Jerusalem ISIS between the um, uh, Maryland and Virginia, the Virgin Mary. So this has all been created a long time ago. So um, here we have a question, and I want to thank the whole uh, community here. I, in my in my video doc here, I don't think I give credit to everyone who contributed. I think Zeus was in there and some other people, but you know who you are, and you're contributing, and I want to share it back with you, these people that are contributing uh, to our common knowledge and learning more and more about uh, the hidden secrets behind how the United States of America, not America, was really created and what the difference is between USA and United States of America, July 4, 1776. And here's another wonderful contribution from Return of Zeus. Uh, they state the United States is defined as a federal corporation under U.S. Code 3002, Section 15. The Virginia Company was turned into the United States during the Revolutionary War by the Freemasonic Founding Fathers who were serving the Grand Lodge of England. The Virginia Company was issued by the British Royal Family from the City of London Corporation for North American settlements. In 1213, King John surrendered the Kingdom of England to the Holy See under the Golden Bull. In 1215, under direct of papal authority, King John issued the Magna Carta, Latin for Great Charter, and that established the one-mile square block called the City of London Corporation as a sovereign entity from England and London. The Holy See uses Latin for official documents, and the Vatican uses Latin as its official language. Novus Ordo Seclorum, is Latin and translates to New Order of the Ages and is on the United States Great Seal and United States $1 Bill, 1933 when that was done. Washington, D.C. is located in both Virginia and Maryland, that is Virgin Mary land. D.C. was originally called Rome in 1669, which is stated state in the Catholic Encyclopedia. D.C. is Roman architecture and Capitol Hill is named after the Capitol, Capitol Capitoline Hill in Rome. Sorry about that. Uh, the ancient Roman fascist symbols all over the federal buildings and federal seals. The federal government is based on the Roman Republic, which was a fascist empire and still is, I may add. Anyway, thank you, Return of Zeus. Appreciate it.
So this was from John Smith. Uh, is Trump president of the United States or is president of the United States of America? Which is it? And this is what we're going to get into. Um, this is Age of Crocodilla. Crocodilla. I get some great names in here. He is the CEO of the Federal Electric Corporation of the United States of America, 10 mile radius, all in capital letters like Trump's name on his birth certificate, which is the corporate personhood banknote straw man used as the guarantor, should be guarantor of the corporation's borrowed debt from the private central banking, not Zionist Jew. Rothschilds run the banking. They're out of Geneva, Switzerland, secret bank accounts, Switzerland, da 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 da, but they're the Vatican's treasure bankers, folks. It's to the Vatican they pledge allegiance, not to the Zionist Jews. The oligarchy that issues the legal co Confederate currency at interest to be used by the public. So in 1871, the Fed Reserve of the District of Columbia was incorporated and the people were made into the corporate personhoods. The D.C. Corporation had issued bonds to the oligarchy and promised to play, pay, play, pay in full corporate personhoods. The D.C. Corporation had issued bonds to the oligarchy and promised to play in, pay in full with interest. When the D.C. Corps couldn't pay, the oligarchy learned the President and Congress to get the Fed Reserve Act to be passed in the middle of the night. So this is kind of a synopsis of what we're about to cover here and get into. And again, thanks to all you contributing. When you get some good knowledge, send it along. Let's, let's help the learning curve of all of us. Thanks again. In my um, YouTube Washington, D.C. was created on February 23, 1871. Here's the number thing. Uh, 223 backwards is 322, the numbers of the skull and bones. Um, here's another coincidence. D-Day, June 6, 1944, uh, is 9 upside down. 6 is D, is fourth letter of the alphabet, and D-D means death destruction. So coincidentally, on the day where the scores of people died, it was 666. Hmm. Um, um, the U.S. Charter Federal Debt Collection Procedure. The Federal Debt Collection Procedures places all courts under equity and commerce and under the International Monetary Fund. 1933, elected officials in the alleged country have been given to the United Nations government system. Under Barack Obama, the Poverty Act of 2001, the U.N. military forces can set up on American soil to confiscate weapons from the United States. This is a bill sponsored under Barack Obama's bill that they can come in and they can take, take your weapons. Check it out later, but public officials are no longer U.S. citizens, foreign agents, okay? Just want to make sure you get that really clear. Well, most of that is true. In fact, there's no federal government anymore. The Fed, Fed was dissolved last time in 1933. That was a big year, beginning ba being bankrupt and insolvent. It's also when the Masonic Dollar Bill was created by FDR, who was a Freemason. In 1933, Corp USA went bankrupt, and the states agreed to support their resolution. In keeping with the bankruptcy, the U.S. Corporation and Congress adjusted their Trading with the Enemies Act, which recognized the people of the United States are enemies. Enemies! of the U.S. Corporation. Nice, huh? All right, title USC 1481, the oath of office is taken as a citizenship is relinquished. Thus, one becomes a foreign entity when they take the oath of office, a foreign entity, agency, of or state. That means every public office is a foreign state. So here's some more information uh, about who really runs the show, who owns the Corporation of the uh, United States, capital letters of America, USA. Um, let's just go down these. This is from uh, sweetliberty.org. I'll include this in the show notes. So the IRS is not a U.S. government agency. It's an agency of the International Monetary Fund. The IMF is an agency of the United Nations. The U.S. has not had a treasury since 1921. The U.S. Treasury is now the International Monetary Fund. The United States does not have any employees because there, there, no there, there is no longer a United States. It's a corporation. Uh, the FCC, CIA, FBA, NASA, not a straight answer, and all the other alphabet gangs were never part of the United States government. They're all corporations, even though the U.S. government held shares of stock in the various agencies. Uh, also, if you'll Google uh, the entity, the book, The Entity, it's all about how the Vatican in their uh, operations, uh, spy operations, 
have uh, control over the FBI, Mossad, CIA, M16, all the rest of them. It's all run out of the Vatican, folks. All right, Social Security numbers are issued by the UN through the International Monetary Fund. The application form is SS5. Uh, the Department of the Treasury issues the SS5, not the Social Security Administration. The SS, SS5 forms do not state who publishes them. Judges do not enforce statutes and codes. Executive administrators enforce statutes and codes. We'll get into that a little more. Uh, the general agreement tariff, you must have a social security number. This is a world binding law they're passing. We have a one world government, a one world law, and one world monetary system. This is why your debt follows you everywhere you go in the world except three countries. Can you name them? North Korea, Syria, and Iran. Gee, what are we trying to bomb the crap out of now and invade? Um... Also, uh, that we're in a slave colony. We're just human resources. It is just that now it is much better organized and changed the name in 1945 of our owners to the United Nations, which is owned by the Vatican. New York City is defined by the federal regulations as United Nations. Rudolph Giuliani, mayor, stated on C-SPAN that New York City was the capital of the world, and he was correct. This is why they call it the Empire State. Social Security is not insurance or a contract, nor is there a trust fund. There is no money in the Social Security. Your Social Security check comes directly from the IMF, which is an agency of the United Nations. You own no property. Slaves cannot own property. You are listed on your deed as a tenant. Also, on your uh, cars, you have a certificate, just like you have a birth certificate. It's not the title. It's a certificate certifying there is a title. Your car's titles are held by the car's manufacturers. The most powerful court in America is not the Supreme Court, but the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania. Revolutionary War was a fraud, playing both sides. The King in England backed both sides of the Revolutionary War. And I went into the other piece about how Jefferson Davis, General of the South, was funded uh, uh, highly by the Vatican Pope um, to, get to, to foster both sides of the war. You cannot use the Constitution to defend yourself because you are not a party to it. We are at sea, folks. We're fictitious straw men. America is a British colony. The United States is a corporation, not a landmass, and it existed before the Revolutionary War, and the British troops did not leave until 1796. Britain is owned by the Vatican. The Pope can abolish any law in the United States. How many of you know that? Uh, 1040 IRS form is the tribute paid to Britain. This the city of London runs the finances of the world. The Pope claims to own the entire planet through the laws of conquest and discovery. These were the papal bulls set forth way back in the 15th century. Uh, one was called Roman Panifix, another Unum Sanctum. The Pope has ordered the genocide and enslavement of million people, millions of people. Um, all the heretics and the non uh, and Christians need to be exterminated, according to the Jesuit Fourth Vows. Uh, we are slaves and own absolutely nothing, not even, the, not even what we think are our children. Um, the United States government was not founded upon Christianity. It's not the duty of the police to protect you. Their job is to protect the corporation and arrest code breakers. Tell that to your cop next time you see him. Everything in the United States is for sale. These are all corporations, folks. We are human capital. That's why they have human resource departments, just like water resource boards. We're considered resources for their, for their, uh, their businesses. The U.N. has financed the operation of the United States government for 50 years. The U.N. also holds all the land in America in fee simple title. The United States and various other companies were making loans to others all over the world during the Depression. The building of Germany's infrastructure in the 30s, including the railroads, was financed by the United States. Okay, it, it, and, and they say we the people. Well, how, how wrong can that be when it took, you know, by uh, another 100 years for the Voting Rights Act so that so that blacks could have, African Americans could have a chance to exercise the rights to vote. But then they had to get until 1965 before they got around all the shenanigans being pulled in the Jim Crow laws and whatnot to keep them from voting. And then it wasn't until 1920, folks, 1920, after 17 or after the Constitutional uh, U.S. Constitution was signed. <laughs> that uh, they allowed women the right to vote, we the people. Yeah, let's let women in a hundred and some odd years later than that, 140 years.
So then, 1924, hey, we the people, we allowed the Native Americans to have the Indian Citizenship Act after kicking out the Native Americans and moving them all along, breaking treaties right and left. And finally, in 1957, there's still some states that barred Native Americans from voting. Yeah, we the people. All right, so a compact is what they say the U.S. Constitution is. Well, it's an agreement among states or between nations on matters which they have common concern. The Constitution contains the Compact Clause, which prohibits one state from entering into a compact with another state without the consent of Congress. Congress is a corporation. Compact is a contract and cannot be assigned. Under the District of Columbia Act of 1871, the corporation is named the District of Columbia. It's trademarked in the names, capital letters, United States Government, United States, U.S., USA, U.S.A. and America. It should be noted that this corporation was not simply a reformation of the municipality as its Organic Act was chartered in 1808. Without amending the, that municipality's charter, this 1871 Act marked the creation of a new private corporation known as the District of Columbia. The District of Columbia, owned and operated by the actual government for purposes of carrying out the business needs of the government under martial law. We're still under martial law. This is done under the constitutional authority for Congress to pass any law within the 10 square, square miles of D.C. The, in, in said, the Act Corp. Uh, U.S. adopted their own constitution, the U.S. Constitution, which was identical to the national constitution, the Constitution of the United States of America, except that it was missing the national constitution's 13th article of amendment and the nation's constitution's 13th, 14th, and 15th articles of amendment, which are respectively renumbered the 14th, 15th, and 16th amendments in their constitution. All right, so the Corp USA was not well received by the people, so the Congress had to revise, revise the acts in 1874 and in 1878. These people were much more aware of the government than we are today, what's going on back then. Corp USA began issuing bonds to cover the expenses of running, running the government. By 1912, there was, there was more bond debt due than there was money in the Treasury. Seven po very powerful families had been buying up the bonds, and in 1912, they demanded their timely redemption. When the U.S. Corp. could not come up with the money due, its owner was obligated to pay. The Treasury of the United States did not have sufficient funds to cover the bonds either, but the seven families accepted all of the assets of the nation's Treasury, along with all of the assets of the Corp.'s U.S. Treasury is a settlement of the debt, saving the nation from bankruptcy. Hey, they were great guys, huh? So in 1913, they created the Federal Reserve Bank, and a creature from Jekyll Island, uh, by Ed, uh, Edward Griffith is a good book to uh, get in on this, though he doesn't disclose everything. He discloses a lot. So in 1913, 13, there was still no money for operating the government, and if the Corp USA didn't do something, the people would revolt. So Corp USA went to those seven families and asked that they could borrow money. Can we borrow from you guys? The head of these families refused to loan U.S. money because Corp had already proven that they could not pay back its debts. However, they did make arrangements to issue the Federal Reserve notes, like a letter of credit. And here on Jekyll Island in 1913, the, uh, the corporation, Federal Reserve Bank, privately agreed to fund Corp USA in their endeavors. Such an action would have been a gigantic violation of law if the government tried such a thing, but there is no law against private corporations making such arrangements. How does one tell the difference between a corporation going by the name of the United States government and the government of the United States? What's worse, how do you tell the difference between the United States and lower caps, which is a trust buddy of the government that represents the trust as trustees, and the United States, a trademark name for the, United, for the District of Columbia? The answer is simple. You can't. You can tell by the context of what's being done. The problem gets even larger when you take into consideration the fact that the officers of the government are also officers of the corporation. They are simultaneously appointed or elected into their offices, both in the corporate and in the government at the same time. In virtually every way, the name of their offices and their responsibilities as corporate officials and as government officers are coincidental between 1871 and 1913. There was a conflict in interest because Corp USA purpose was to fulfill the business needs of the actual government. In 1914, the freshman class and all centers that successfully ran for reselection in 1913 by popular vote are seated in the corporation U.S. capacity 
only, an original jurisdiction Senate seat was vacated because states failed to appoint new senators. In 1970, 17, Corp USA enters World War I and passes their Trading with the Enemies Act, of which uh, George Bush's father was, was tried and convicted of uh, in, <clears throat> in the 30s when he was gun running. In 1980, President Wilson is reelected to the Electoral College, but their election is required to be confirmed by the constitutionally set Senate, where the new Corp USA, only senators were allowed to participate in the Electoral College vote confirmation. The only authority that could possibly be been used for electoral confirmation was corporate only. Therefore, President Wilson was not confirmed into office for a second term as President of the United States of America and was seated as the corporate U.S. President's capacity. He was the CEO, president and CEO. Therefore, the original jurisdiction government seats were vacated because the people didn't seat any original jurisdiction government officers. There's been no election since 1913, and all this you can check here on the message board on the link I'll post here. Therefore, there's no election of officers of the government of the United States of America, and all America is none the wiser. The government was still there, and the Constitution was still alive and well and living in Washington, D.C., but once again, there was nobody sitting in the seats of the officers of the government, just like it was when the Founding Fathers signed the Constitution, but the states had not ratified it. The government existed, but no one was seated in the office. Okay, there hasn't been an election since, and there won't be one until we wake up again, folks. Uh, when the government couldn't lawfully be involved with the Federal Reserve Bank, the corporations can be. This is how they get everything. Federal Reserve is no more federal than Federal Express. In fact, the Federal, Express, federal Reserve made $77 billion in profits in 2012 financial filings, principally by creating money at interest for the U.S. government debt. The more debt they run up, the more money they make. So here's some corporate papers. If you don't, uh, you know, still don't believe the United States is a corporation, here's the state of Delaware where many incorporate into. And notice that registered agent information, the company corporation, uh, Centerville Road in Wilmington, Newcastle County in Delaware. Here's the United States corporate papers, okay? 1989. Um, here's the Central Intelligence Agency corporate papers. Okay, someone owns all these folks. These are corporations that are owned by people and families. The Social Security Corporation, corporate papers. Here I owe, I owe, so it's off to work I go. And that's how they keep the states in line. No debt is, and people in line. Um, and this is what they're doing and Trump's trying to do with the sanctuary cities is defund the states. That's how they control it. Federal government gives states money and then they can take it back and cause states all sorts of havoc. So who owns the Central Bank of International Settlements? Well, this is coming from another uh, a message board I got on my um, on my YouTube channel, and I appreciate you guys all putting this stuff in. And, and if I don't give you credit, uh, please know that I really appreciate you sending this stuff in and furthering the research and knowledge of us all. So the Federal Reserve is controlled by white Roman Catholics Jerome Powell and Daniel Torrilio. They chair the majority of and the most important Federal Reserve committees, including the Committee com Committee of Board of Governor Affairs. The head of the Bank of International Settlements is a Spanish Roman Catholic named Jaime Carona. Who controls APAC, American Israeli Political Action Committee, the largest government body in the world? Not the Jesuits. The purpose of the lobbies is to seek favors. The very fact that the Jews need a lobby tells you they don't control everything. It's a great point. All right, so who crafts the culture with their immediate conglomerates? The CIA controls the media admitted by certain journalists. And they've always been run and created by the Knights of Mal Malta serving the Jewish papacy. Again, see the book, The Entity. Department of Homeland and Security, which uh, Michael Shertoff, uh, Israeli, also had the uh, detection um, machines that you go through airports. He sold and made a fortune of that, even when he was right after Department of Homeland and Security. And he ordered the installation of these machines, and he had the company that ran it. Isn't that great? He later joined and was totally created by Rome, including Jesuit coadjutor John Ganon. Shertoff also took time to visit the tomb of Pope Paul II in Rome, showing his allegiance to the Jewish papacy. So isn't it obvious why Switzerland's never involved in these fiascos? Switzerland was never involved in one war, World War I or World War II. Switzerland is the treasurer to the, the banker to the, the Vatican. Switzerland has all the secret bank accounts. Geneva is the bank of international settlements where all the uh, <clears throat> banks, except for those three countries, settle their central banking. Uh, the United States did not declare independence from Great Britain or King George. 
And uh, let's get into a little more about um, some of the notes I got from um, uh, the last piece I did. All right, so here's the quote I read at the beginning of the piece here. All right, so just to go over corporations one more time, they're privately owned businesses, meaning the corporate United States belongs to one or more private individuals and always governed by a board of directors. The corporate United States is privately owned by a group of European royal and elite individuals tied to the Federal Reserve System. The letters in corporation are recorded in the Vatican. The President of the United States is actually the CEO of the United States and the Congress and all other corporate employees. Everything they do is in the interest of the corporate owners. I can't access these documents because of national security. This is coming from retired U.S. Judge Dale, and I'll include these in the show notes. In order to promulgate and enforce criminal laws to govern the sovereign public, government must be sovereign too, which is an accepted rule of law derived from the ancient law of kings. Corporations are not and never can be sovereign. Uh, the sovereign is super and reign is to rule over. So it's to rule over the highest person. You are the author of your own authority. That is the sovereign sovereignty of your own individuality as a human. They are not real. They are fiction and only exist on paper. Therefore, all laws created by these government corporations are private corporation regulata regulations called public law, statutes, codes, and ordinances to conceal their true nature. Do the judge and lawyers know about this? Of course they do. Since the government bodies are not sovereign, they cannot promulgate or enforce criminal laws. They can only create and enforce civil laws. The law of contracts requires signed written agreements and complete transparency. This is where we can get them on, on contract law, <clears throat> excuse me, because they are committing fraud by deception. Contracts are supposed to be open and above board and by consent. There is no constitutional criminal laws or transparency in the American justice system, just us system. Everyone arrested, convicted, and sent to prison under these civil laws are imprisoned by consent. And therein, all American jails are actually debtors' prisons. You didn't know you were consenting to go to prison, did you? Courts are for-profit corporations. Everything with an association, a .org, an Inc., those are corporations. Every time you sign a bank statement and you get your, your bank statement back in capital letters, why are you applying and submitting to them, giving them your money? Shouldn't they be submitting to you? It's because you're joining a corporation, folks, and they're giving you back a promissory note, and that's why your name is in capital letters. Most of the county and state prisons and all the federal prisons are privately owned corporate businesses, which kick back to the sentencing judges. The Bureau of Prisons Privatization Management Branch provides general oversight. So if you're convicted in these courts, you can expect to serve time. Now you know why the U.S. has such high prison populations. All state governments are now sub-corporations of the federal government. The state and federal government is a corporation, and therefore the Congress, state legislatures, city councils, municipalities, and all state and federal courts are corporate entities posing as constitutional branches of government. Posing as constitutional branches of government. So have you ever wondered why those who fight the IRS are not allowed to bring up their constitutional rights in courts? Constitutional rights do not apply in an equity court. Contract law supersedes individual and constitutional rights. Very important to understand. Contract law trumps, <laughs> there's that word, supersedes individuals and constitutional rights. Corporate law is a totally different animal from common law. Ask any corporate attorney. When you sign, when you inadvertently, here's the fraud, inadvertently, you're supposed to be made aware, sign contracts with this bastard entity posing as free United States of America, when you register to vote, when uh, you join the club, basically, you're signed your contract, when you register to vote, when you go to the bank and get a checking account, uh, when you apply for a social security card, pretty much any time you sign your name, you're signing a contract. Now they're doing fingerprints and soon it'll be uh, the check marks, you say, this is my signature. So have you ever looked at trust corporations? Trust is entrusting something to somebody else or someone else. So the Resolution Trust of America is associated with the United States of America, Inc. It's a fiduciary rela relationship in which one party holds legal title to another. Who holds the equitable title? Ever notice that property deeds state tenant when referring to the supposed owner? So you think you own your land? Think again. Ever notice property deeds state tenant when referring to the supposed owner? Yep, you think you own it. You're just a tenant and paying rent. That's the nature of a property tax. We're ruled by fictitious entities. Corporations are fictions. We've been lied to our entire lives we, that we are free. The United States is owned lock, stock, and barrel. Each of us U.S. citizens in the United States is owned.
All right, so the 14th Amendment was not lawfully ratified, but what it did anyway was not free the slaves, but enslave us all. It established the fact that the United States federal government has been dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act of March 9th, 1933, declared by President Roosevelt being bankrupt and insolvent. Then the Gold Clause dissolved, remember they took away the gold, the Gold Clause dissolved the sovereign authority of the United States and the official capacities of all United States governmental offices, officers, and departments, and as further evidence, the United States federal government only exists in name today. Congressional record, March 17, 1933. So the UN is what owns everything, as I was stating before. Who are they? They were founded in 1945-46. Um, I'm not going to go over all this. I'll put this in the show notes. But they are technically an extraterritorial through a treaty agreement with the U.S. government. So they're, again, a separate city-state. They're not beholden by any United States laws. They're on their own land. And, of course, the land was purchased by Nelson Rockefeller and the Rockefeller family, and they donated the land to the city. How nice of them. The United Nations pledges adherence to the Atlantic Charter and means the United States allegiance is to the Atlantic Charter. It is, therefore, the Atlantic Charter that is the ownership of the United States, and the Atlantic Charter, is in turn, is ownership of the office held by His Majesty, which office of monarchy will pass to the heirs of that office. Adherence to the Atlantic Charter signed the Declaration of the United Nations on January 19, 1, 1942, which became the basis for the United Nations. The Atlantic Charter sets goals for the post-war world in spite of many other international agreements that shaped the world thereafter. The General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, the post-war independence of European colonies, and much more are derived from the Atlantic Charter. U.S. Franklin D. Roosevelt and British Prime Minister Winston Churchill and other Freemason drafted the charter at the Atlantic Conference in Placentia, get it, Placentia? Bay, Newfoundland. They issued it as a joint declaration, get this, on August 14, 1941. <laughs> they signed the Atlantic Charter before we even joined the war with uh, Britain. So they had it all planned out ahead of World War II, folks. That even before the end of the Second World War, the Atlantic Charter was somehow prophetically determined the designs of the post-war world. All right, so on December 26, 1933, Congress replaced statutes with international law, placing all states under international law. December 1945, the International Organization of Immunities Act relinquished every public office of the United States to the United Nations. Now, I want to make note that the United Nations was founded on a former slaughterhouse. Title 22 U.S.C. identifies all public officials as foreign agents. The United States is a federal corporation and not a government. The federal rules of civil procedure say that court jurisdiction and immunity fall under a foreign state. Uh, the Pan American Treaty of, of uh, 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 Treaty Series 881 stated Congress replaced statutes with international law, placing under all states under international law. Uh, Congress relinquished every public office over to the UN in the Act, uh, the International Organization Immunities Act of uh, December 9th, 1945. Now think about this. The war is just ending. They got all these things doing. What are these guys doing? <laughs> they're enslaving us all further in all their legal, legal removers while saying they're, they're representing the people. It's all a fraud, folks. All right, so in closing, Jim Trafficant, who was really a good hero of, of, of the people of the United States, small capital letters, the real people, humans, uh, he said this on the record uh, from March 17th, 19, 1993, volume 33, H1303. So you got to question that right there. Quote, Mr. Speaker, we are now in Chapter 11. Members of Congress, that's the bankruptcy, members of Congress are official trustees providing over the greatest reorganization of any bankrupt entity in the world history of the U.S. government. We are setting forth, hopefully, a blueprint for our future. There are some who say it is a coroner's report that will lead to our demise. It is, it is an established. When it expands, it gets even better. It is, it is, there are some who say it is a coroner's report that will lead to our demise. Should have ended there. When that expands, it gets even better. The Gold Clause dissolved the sovereign authority of the United States and the official capacities of all United States government offices, officers, and departments, as we said earlier. The receivers of the United States bankruptcy are the international bankers via the United Nations, the World Bank, and the International Monetary Fund, all controlled 
by the Vatican and the Jesuits. All United States offices, officials, departments are now operating within a de facto status in name only under emergency war powers. Within the constitutional Republican form of government now dissolved, the receivers of the bankruptcy have adopted a new form of government for the United States. This is the new form of government known as democracy being established under socialist communist order under a new governor of Amer for America. The act was instituted and established by transferring and or placing the office of Secretary of Treasury to that of the Governor of the International Monetary Fund. The U.S. Treasury Secretary of, US Secretary of Treasury receives no compensation for representing the United States. All right, and then finally, just some notes here. The Bankruptcy Act of 1930. You can get into this. I'll, I'll post this. Uh, this is when they declared the United States was in bankruptcy. They changed the currency. They put the took changed the gold standard. Uh, declared the United States enemies of the state, uh, people of the United States, the USA Inc. Corp. and whatnot. Then in the 70s and 80s, they removed the gold standard from the dollar, started doing all the massive debt <clears throat> escalation because there's nothing to tie it to. Uh, and it's a fiat currency, um, which is just basically paper and ink. Uh, in 1992, the CEO of USA Inc., George Bush, signed Executive Order 12803, ordering the corporate states, counties, and municipalities to sell off all their public assets. You hear about Trump wanting to sell off all the public assets. Well, you can thank George Bush for that order. Uh, the CEO of USA, Bill Clinton, Inc., uh, ordered 13132, a new form of government called federalism. His order described when and how corporate federal agency regulations can preempt laws passed by state legislatures. Uh, so why aren't the American people told that we're still classified as enemies of the state? Why haven't folks heard about the USA Inc. bankruptcy of 33? Why aren't we told our justice system is based on corporate commercial law and not on real true justice? Because all lawyers have to swear an oath of secrecy and agree to administer the bankruptcy. They're in the club. All right, so that's about all I got. Thanks for listening. I'll put all this stuff in the show notes and uh, speak your truth, folks. Learn this stuff. Let's change and, and make a difference where we can.